It's been an exciting week, but today's an exciting day. So this is my critter barn, my future critter barn. And this is one of the reasons that we were so excited to have a homestead in a country life. Last week, Brad dug a trench and ran a water line for my critters and for other purposes as well, right? We can bring tractors on this ramp, we can bring vehicles on this ramp, we can bring critters on this ramp and wash them if we so need to. But having this water source here will allow me to feed and water my critters easier. So today, what we need to do in prep for my critters and in prep for the concrete pour is to get rid of this extra dirt. Apparently it needs to come down four inches, I'm being told. So Brad and his handy dandy precious and the Summit tractor and then the Summit trailer, which is now hooked to the Heisen sector, will all work together to get rid of some of this dirt. So stay tuned. So as I mentioned last weekend, he dug this up and then he was able to spread some of the dirt with the excavator, but there's too much dirt. So once again, Summit to the rescue, scoop it, we'll put it in the Summit dump trailer, and then I'm not sure if it's going to go in our reserve pile or if it's gonna be used right away. I'm not sure. I never know. He's got plans and he knows what he's doing, but I don't always know what the plan is. Scoop number two. How many scoops do you think it's gonna take for that little pile? I should ask that before scoop number two. Yep, dry and dusty. Look, look at dust storm. Piney Grove Dust Bowl. I might need a mask for the dirt, the dust pile. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, wow, that's, that's like a little dust bath I just got. I think that's scoop number four. Go ahead, guess how many scoops. I guess I should also ask how many scoops will the trailer hold? That trailer has been so, so handy out here. It's invaluable, we use it every single weekend. Wood chips, dirt, supplies, sticks. We use it for chipping, to actually chip directly into. Right up against the footer. All right guys, Deb has been behind the camera and I've been on the tractor, but what we're trying to do here is, you know, scrape up some of this dirt. I got most of that pile that I pushed with the excavator last week. I got most of it um, kind of balled up there and then we got the trailer full. And now we got Deb's gonna drive the Heisen over so we can dump the dump trailer. She loves driving the Heisen, but she doesn't love backing it up. She's already laughing because she, <laughs> She just doesn't like backing it. We gotta back it up to this dirt pile. We got quite a bit of load in there for that Heisen. You can see it squatting in the rear a little. I don't think she pulled forward enough. Your favorite part. And she's got it, she's got it pretty, you got it pretty straight. You can see how low the hitch is right there. That's good. That's where I wanted it. It's going up manually, but this is much easier when it's hooked to the summit and uh, using the hydraulics to actually lift the cylinder, but we'll get it manually. We just don't want to switch back and forth between using the bucket on the summit and then hooking it up to the trailer. She said she put it exactly where she wanted to put it. So give her some words of encouragement because she really didn't want to back this up. Letting it down is a lot easier. She doesn't want to back it up anymore, so she's gonna go over there and do a big U-turn. I'm not sure there's enough space for that. No, it looks like she got it. We're just so blessed and thankful to have the right tools for the job. If we didn't have all this great equipment from our sponsors, then uh, we would be just using the Kubota tractor that we own, scooping that dirt up and then driving across the pasture every time the bucket was full 
Alrighty, the pile's gotten smaller and smaller. And it looks like the trailer's almost ready to dump again. He's also scraping, he's scraping more too because we want to help the concrete folks out. We want to get as much of this up as we can so they're not up here scraping with picks and everything to get this lower. Now this sand is one thing, but underneath the sand is clay and it is hard. And we don't want them working any harder than they already have to. Brad's dumping this load and it'll go quicker and it'll be much more efficient. But I have to tell you, I got that thing exactly where I wanted to. It wasn't smooth or graceful, but I got it where I wanted to. And I'm pretty proud of myself because I am not good at backing up even though I try and I've not been good at backing up the trailer on the Hyson. Not that I'm great with it on the Summit, but better than I was with the Hyson. So I was a little proud of myself that I got it. Of course, Brad's already dumping it much quicker, but I did it. So progress folks, progress. All right guys, I had to call an audible because I was putting way too much tongue weight on the Heisen sector. You saw how it was squatting and I actually overfilled that last trailer or filled it very full. And when I took off, it actually pulled a little bit of a wheelie. And then to make matters worse, when I went to dump the dump trailer, I was uh, turning this little knob here and I turned it too far. And when you turn it too far, it comes out. Well, what happens when it comes out? Hydraulic fluid just sprayed all over the back of the Hyson. So I degreased the back of the Hyson, got that all clean, filled this back up with hydraulic fluid. Here's the level right here and uh, hooked it up to the tractor just so we don't, um, we don't overtax our equipment because we don't want to break stuff. We enjoy using our equipment, but we don't want to break it. So back to the pole barn, I'm going to scrape up a little bit more. And the reason I'm doing this, if I didn't explain is because that's packed concrete. You see a lot of powdery clay where it's been dry for a couple years in there. But underneath that powdery layer is just hard packed clay. And uh, the concrete guys will have to come in here with picks and shovels. And what I'm trying to do is make it easier for them. So I'm going to scrape it a little bit more with the excavator. I scratch up the surface in case I don't get the level right. And uh, also dig in the drain line or at least dig the trench for the drain line that'll go in the center, the drain that'll go in the center of the concrete pad. Oh, that's a tight little squeeze. Look at that. I mean, this is going really fast. This is scraping part. So we got the sides scraped up with the bucket. That way he could get close to the footers. He can't do that with Precious, the excavator. So now he's taking the excavator and he's going to scrape with the blade. So he gets to use all his tools. Look, he's used a Summit, he's used a Kubota, and he's used Precious. Oh, and the Heisen. It's been a good day. I think that was two passes, just two passes. I'm telling you, this, this mini excavator has been a blessing too. We found it, we found it on Facebook Marketplace during the pandemic. And we got a great deal on it used and the folks down there drove it up to us. And we never ever realized how much we would use it until we got it. Brad works hard, and when there's a piece of equipment he wants, I mean, I don't, I support him. I don't fuss about it at all. But when he said excavator, I was thinking, really? But okay, that's that's fine. I knew that at that time we had some water lines and things we wanted to run, but it has just proven invaluable. And he's always said, well, you know, one day when we sell it, and I just honestly, folks, I don't see him selling it. It's just so handy. Brad said. Why don't you get some from the loft? The loft is super cool, but I try not to spend too much time up here. There are no railings, and I'm clumsy. But you get a better layout of the barn this way. There's my feed room right there. And I'm standing on the shop. The rest of that area is where the stalls will be. 
I think the piles look smaller from up here. It's actually got a pretty good sized pile going. And he's watching the back of that. Last thing he wants to do is hit the wall. When the excavator spins or rotates, it goes beyond the tracks. So he has to be careful. Not just watching the tracks, but watching the house. The house of the excavator, that is. Ooh, look at that. It is fun. It's, it's helpful and it really is fun. Ooh, look at her a little struggling. That's a pretty good pile of dirt he's got there. So Miss Piney Grove wants a shot at the title. Okay, so I get to push. Okay, hold on, lay down. That far, that good? A little more. I'm still trying to figure out how far. That's like all it wants to go. Oh, there it goes. Now go forward and push. Oh, this is kind of fun. Do I want to lower it more? Back up and lower it more. I need to back up and try again because I don't have a big enough bike. It's almost like I wish I could rotate the blade because it's not like you can just hold it at the same level. It's like a trial and error thing of taking too, not taking too big of a bite, but taking a big enough bite where it does what it's supposed to. Let's try that. Oh, look. Okay, now I'm getting somewhere. Now I'm getting somewhere. Oh, I didn't raise my blade. Oh. I know this is probably driving him crazy. Because this is... Oh, but look. Oh, it's fun. Oh, it's fun. Okay. I got this. So see, when he's doing it, I'm not realizing how many adjustments he's making to the blade. But he's constantly making adjustments to the blade. When he's doing it, all I see is dirt pushing. I'm not realizing how much he's actually manipulating the blade. Oh, she's a groaning. She groaned and stuff like the blade. Not all the way, That's fine. Go get another bite. Get another bite. Get another bite. I can get another bite. So you got these two sticks, right? You got these two sticks and they make you go in different directions. So he puts one hand on both sticks and that works for him because he's got a bigger hand. Without. Nope. Y'all can really see the difference now, right? In having Brad run it and me. Awkward versus not awkward. Bite. Oh, yeah, I think that was better. I didn't get as big of a bite. I'm not being nearly as efficient as he is, but okay. I would like to just play with that when we're not on a time. when we're not on a timeline. Wait, now I got to fix my boo-boo because I, I back drug and I didn't mean to. Now I got to straighten myself back up, lower my blade, go forward. Push forward. Okay. Oh, now I'm up all underneath my dirt. Okay. I gotta raise my blade. Okay, at least now I'm not back dragging any extra. Okay, so I could keep doing that and I would have fun doing that if we weren't on a timeline, but I'm not efficient, but it's fun. It it's, takes finagling. You do it and it just looks like, oh, you're pushing dirt, you're not. You're constantly adjusting the blade yeah. up and down in your speed and your forward. And you don't realize that until you get to doing it. And again, not efficient at all. But one day when we're out here full time, I'm going to be efficient on this thing. I just am. So I'm no expert on this machine. I, I don't pretend to be. I've got obviously more seat time than Deb on it. But when you're pushing with a tract, or at least with an excavator, I've used a skid steer, but it's been 20 years or more since I've been on a skid steer. But what you want to do is you want to get one area level and then take that area and bring it across and the tracks will keep you level. The problem is, is that you'll, you'll run out of the ability to push. So as you're pushing, 
the tracks will either start to spin or the machine will groan and, and you can't push as much and you'll start making a hill. And once you start making a hill, it's real hard to kind of get it level again. And that's what Deb was running into. She was getting a little push here and then the machine would start riding up on the hill and she wasn't dropping her blade and continuing the bite forward. So um, she was running out of dirt in front of her. And, and what she learned is that you gotta keep moving the dozer blade. And when you're pushing long, you gotta take the dozer blade and just keep pushing it farther into the dirt because you're coming up on a hill and changing the angle of the excavator. And she just didn't know that. And it's just something you get used to when you're in it because you just notice that you're not, you're not pushing dirt anymore. He said, oh, you can also spin your dirt with your tracks. Like Deb had a hard time manipulating the blade and the speed of the excavator. I don't think we're gonna throw in manipulating dirt with the tracks. We're still on super duper beginner or excavating for dummies with Deb. Again, when I watch him push dirt, it's just it's such subtle movements. And you really can't tell what the operator's doing, but there's a lot going on in that little machine. It's a pretty good pile of dirt. It's time for how big's the pile? The pile never looks big on camera to me, but it's, it's a pretty good sized pile that he's scraped up between the tractor and the excavator. I'm not on level ground, but it's, it's, a, pre it's a pretty good sized pile that he's got going on here and really, truly in record time. Look at them all fancy schmancy, moving the house, moving the tracks, moving the blade. It's not a giant blade, but look, you push a lot of dirt. So that's the center drain. That way we can wash out stalls and have all the water go to the central location and then it will pipe out to the side. We started this barn years ago. We just had a pole barn. Then we had concrete poured, um, the footings poured. One thing we also did is we put the roll up door in there. Then we had the shop for my dad who then passed away this past uh, January. We got your feed room there and everything, and we just made the decision recently to um, put a whole concrete floor in here and put a drain. So how does it look into you? How does it feel to you? Because this, this is all about Deb, guys. This is, I've got my barns, this is hers. I'm super excited. And we went back and forth on concrete, no concrete, how much to concrete. We'll make sure the critters are comfortable and they're taken care of. But the fact that we're so close to ticking off this big item, and it's a big item, getting this floor in is a big item for us. I'm super excited because the next thing is stalls and then it will really be real. Yeah, we got the lighting, we got the water in, um, so concrete floor and stalls and this, this barn's pretty much done. But this video is pretty much done too. So the next time you see this barn will be when the guys come in here and get all the forms and the cross pieces, basically get it prepped and ready, lay the plastic down in the wire and then we'll do a video on the concrete. And uh, soon, within the next few months, we will have a nice concrete floor in the Piney Grove barn. Yay. All right, babe, you wanna go ahead and close out the video? I guess we're done. That'll <laughs> do it for this video. We hope you have a great blessed day. Y'all take care out there. We'll catch you on the next one, guys. Take care. <laughs>